Hey, I'm Ryan from Ryanet, and thanks for checking out our DIY screen printing kit. We'd like to welcome you to screen printing. This kit is a collaboration between Ryanet and Print Liberation, brought to us by Print Liberation. It's awesome because we both have roots in DIY screen printing. We started printing shirts in a garage, basement, and kitchen, just like we're going to show you in this video using this DIY screen printing kit. We built this kit because we want to bring screen printing to the masses. Screen printing is a rad opportunity, it's so much fun, and we're excited to share it with you. So let's begin. Laid out, we have our press, platen, exposure jig, exposure light, emulsion, emulsion sensitizer, screen degreaser, emulsion remover, spray nozzles, light safe yellow bulb, palette adhesive, DIY ink, scrub brushes for cleaning the screen, emulsion scoop coater, screen, squeegee, and your all important supply pack, instruction manual, and DVD. Our gig poster kit comes with essentially the same thing, with the addition of some more ink, poster paper, a bigger palette, and a bigger screen. Normal household tools and supplies you might want to have. Half inch wrench, Sharpie or magic marker, scotch tape, clear or white tape, ruler or tape measure, scissors, screw gun or Phillips screwdriver, paper towels or wipes, cleaning gloves if you don't want to get your hands dirty, and if you're doing posters, a blow dryer comes in handy. Let's show you how to assemble the screen print DIY press. So there's some really great instructions in your instruction manual on how to do that. Let's show you how to do it right here on this DVD too. It's not that hard. You're going to need a drill with a Phillips head or a screwdriver with a Phillips head, half inch wrench um, or another half inch wrench. This is a one I found around the house or a crescent wrench. So I would start by opening up the press like that. And then the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the shock. Very easy to attach the shock. Simply just clip it on like that. Now this is going to be a pretty strong shock, so if you try to actually put it together before your uh, press is, uh, push it down before your you know, screen's in it, it's going to be pretty hard. It's not broken though, don't flip, don't flip out. So uh, right now we're going to go ahead and put the screen brackets on, or the clamp brackets. So take your screws apart, and then these go right here on the side. Very, very simple to install once again. One bolt through the top one bolt through the bottom, brackets facing out. So put the bolt on the bottom there, put the washers between the nut and the bracket, and then go ahead and just tighten these guys down with your half inch wrenches. Next, your screen clamp. So we'll just simply take the bolts off the back of the screen clamp and then slide these guys in here and then just put them on one at a time. Pretty simple to do. Next, let's attach our platen. Right now, we're showing you attaching the poster platen. Now, you're going to want to use, make sure that you use the shorter, fatter screws. If you use the longer mounting screws accidentally, they'll go all the way through the platen. Very easy to do this, too. Just take your press, put it upside down. That's when your drill comes in handy, and that's why I recommend a power drill. Just put these guys in. This is a little helpful if you got some buddy, a buddy or something to help out, but possible to do by yourself too. Make sure to match these holes up with the pre-drilled holes in the platen. The press is set up now, pretty simple to do. We just need to mount it to a table or surface. So there's eight mounting screws. Depending on the type of printing you're doing, uh, for instance, if you're doing t-shirts, you wanna make sure the press is mounted to the edge of a table so you can get the shirt all the way on a platen. If you're just doing poster printing, you can mount it to more of the center of a table because you don't have to put a t-shirt over the platen. So also make sure that you're not mounting this to like a nice countertop or something like that because you're gonna have to drill into that. So I put another board on top of that you can drill into it. Something you don't mind making a few holes in. Let's talk for a second about our optimal print environment. Where are we gonna be screen printing at? So as you can tell right now we're in a kitchen. Optimally you're gonna wanna have access to electricity, water, and a place where you can create a light safe environment that can be a separate place than where you're printing at, but you do need to have a light safe area when we do the emulsion process. So right now, a kitchen, a bedroom, some place that you're not worried about getting dirty or you can wipe up if you spill is a good possibility. A laundry room, you know, a large bathroom, garage, basement, anything like that works great too. Let's go ahead and start the printing process, which begins with screen prep. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna degrease our screen. So for that, we're gonna need our screen, we're gonna need our degreaser, we're gonna need one of our brushes, and we're gonna need 
the degreaser spray nozzle. Now, what we're doing right now is we're doing this in a kitchen. It's a pretty nice kitchen. Our buddy Nick's letting us use it. Um, he asked us to actually prep the kitchen a little bit, so we're gonna do two things. We're gonna take a black trash bag, which is great for blocking out light. Next shot, we're gonna do emulsion. We're gonna need a light safe environment, so this, this light coming in through the window is not gonna be good. Plus, he doesn't want us to get his stainless stink all dirty. So we're gonna actually gonna take this and kind of create our own washout sink. So just a simple black trash bag. I'm gonna cut it in two pieces, and half of that I'll put in the sink, and then the other half I'll put up on the window. So this is our DIY washout area setup. So we light safe the window, and we put a nice trash bag liner in the sink so we don't stain it with any of the emulsion or ink. You can even go a step further. I cut a hole in the bottom of the trash bag, but you can even go a step further and put some, like some very thick, actually we'll do it right now, um, underneath the sink here so that stuff doesn't go down the drain. We'll just put this at the bottom so that kind of filters out any of the big particles that might go down the drain. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up our citrus base environmentally friendly degreaser with water. Now this is sudsy, so we're gonna to wanna to fill it slowly and just fill that up with water. Very simple. And put the cap on, the spray cap. Next, let's go ahead and degrease the screen. To degrease the screen, we're going to get it wet. So I'm gonna use the nozzle here and just get it wet like so. The reason why we are degreasing the screen is because we wanna make sure that all the particulate, all the grease, all the dirt is off the mesh. I'm also gonna take a little bit of this screen degreaser and spray that on my scrub brush. Now I'll get the scrub brush wet a little bit. Clean, warm water works great. And it's very simple to do. You just wanna degrease the mesh like that on both sides. And then even degrease the frame a little bit. We're getting the dust, the dirt, and the grease off the frame. Once that's done, take our warm water again. You can even use a little bit of spray. That works better. And then just rinse it all down. Once again, this does not stain at all. This is completely eco-friendly product. So you don't have to worry about that in a tub or anything like that. But just to be on the safe side, we have this nice contraption down here, which works out great actually. So once that's degreased, we want to let that dry. A couple of different ways we can do to dry it. Just let it dry, we can put it in the sun, we can let it dry by the air, we can put it in front of a fan. I'm actually gonna take a blow dryer and just you know, dry it off real fast to expedite the process. Now we're gonna to go to the photo emulsion process. So right now we've opened up our dual cure emulsion. Before we sensitize it or use this, we need to make a light safe environment. So to do that, we're gonna take our light safe yellow ball that we got in the kit right here. I plugged it into just a standard lamp. Now you can plug it into your lights too, but just a standard lamp allows us to turn that on and off. What the light safe environment or the light safe bulb does is it allows us basically to create a area that has no UV light. The UV light's actually what exposes the emulsion or exposes the screen. If we don't have the light safe environment, we're not gonna be able to do the photo emulsion process. So we've taken a black trash bag, put it over the window, we're gonna turn the main lights off, and for the remainder of this emulsion process, we're gonna be in light safe. So to mix the emulsion, we need to be in a light safe environment once again. We're gonna take the diazo, and we're actually going to fill this up one halfway with distilled water. Using distilled water is important. We had distilled water that was filtered out and poured into this cup. One halfway with water. So a half full. Be careful not to spill any of the diazo out. It's very, um, it's yellow, so it's very, got a distinct color to it. If you spill it out, not the proper amount will be mixed into the emulsion to sensitize it. Now, before this is actually mixed together, it's unsensitized, meaning that we can put the lights on and be fine. However, once we mix it, it becomes sensitized. So once that's all mixed up there, we're gonna take the top of our container, we're gonna scrape the rest of the emulsion in there. The reason that we're doing this is we don't want unsensitized emulsion on top dripping down into the sensitized emulsion in the bottom. Also it gives us just a little more emulsion. So now we're going to take the sensitizer that's mixed up and just simply dump it in. Very simple. Once that's dumped in, you can see it's gonna actually change the color of the emulsion. So we're just gonna mix this guy up. I'll kind of tilt it so you can see what I'm doing. Slowly mix it up. You don't wanna mix it too aggressively. 
you mix it too aggressively, you're going to create quite a mess. So just slowly mix this up. Also be careful not to get a ton of bubbles into it. If you mix it too fast, you'll get bubbles into it. And we're gonna mix it until basically you see a consistent color and you don't see any of the darker diazo in the emulsion any longer. We're gonna get the sides of the container nice and good too. And see how that's a consistent color now? That's exactly what we're looking for. So once this is mixed up, we recommend letting it bubble or air out for a you know, couple hours probably um, before you go to use it. So just take the cap and then put the cap on and just leave it tilted open like that. And be careful not to spill it. And then that way it'll allow the bubbles to come out of it. Right now we're gonna go ahead and wipe out the emulsion scoop coater and then pour emulsion and coat the screen. Once again, in a light safe environment, we've mixed our emulsion and we have let that kind of vent out a bit to get all the bubbles out of it. So I'm gonna wipe this down to get all the dust or dirt that's out of it, just with warm water, clean rag, pretty simple. And we're gonna take the emulsion, and we're gonna go ahead and pour that in. See, there still is a little bit of bubbles in there. You don't need to put a lot of emulsion in, just a little bit, probably a third full would work fine. The more emulsion you save, the more economic you're gonna be operating, so that's always good too. Um, you're always gonna have a little bit of drips at the end, so you can just take a, once again, a clean rag with some warm water on it and wipe that down, keep your emulsion nice and clean. Now, one thing I do recommend doing is taking a Sharpie or a pen and writing the date that you mix the emulsion on the emulsion container. The reason that we're doing this is that this emulsion lasts for about six to 12 weeks, depending on the temperature it's stored in. You wanna store it in a cooler environment. The fridge works great, but you never wanna let this stuff freeze. If you let it freeze, it's gonna go bad. So if we write today's date on it, 327, we're gonna know roughly you know, 10, 12 weeks, we're probably gonna have expired emulsion and we should order some more to be prepared. Now we're going to coat the screen. So to coat the screen, you wanna make sure that you have your scoop coater ready. You wanna make sure the end caps are all the way pressed on tightly. So make sure they're tightly on. Probably should do that also before you put the emulsion in the scoop coater. Then we wanna have our screen in a stable position. Now it just so happened that I was able to take this screen and slide it under this cabinet so I could press up against it and that cabinet held it perfectly in place at kind of a 85, 80 degree angle. That's perfect. If we didn't have that cabinet there, what we could do is we could take it and put it against a wall or put it against the edge of a cabinet and then take like a piece of wood or a two by four and stick it behind here. So maybe something like this, if I had um, I don't know, some tape like this right here and then pressed it up against the wall like that, so it's stable. You want it to be in a stable environment so that we can use both hands on the scoop coater and the screen's really you know, stout and stable. As you do this more often, if you get better at it, you can also use your hand and just use your hand on one end, having the screen like this and then using the coater like this. So you can use a hand with, you know, kind of stable the position, but I recommend putting it kind of someplace where it's very nice and stout and stable. Now your scoop coater has two sides to it. It has a sharp side right there and then it has a round side, which will be noticeably thicker. The sharp side is the side that you want to use to coat your screen. The round side is, will lay more emulsion down. It's used for specialty types of printing, um, which you can learn more about on, by Googling it or on our website. So basically, you're going to use the sharp side. Now, right now, this is the t-shirt screen, which is a 156 mesh. It's a white mesh. We're going to make sure that the mesh is degreased and dried. When you're drying it, you also want to keep it clean, so drying in a nice, clean area. Don't want to dry it in a dirty garage because then you just, you know, voided the degreasing of it. We're going to start on the outside of the screen. We're going to coat that side of the screen first, and then we're going to coat the inside of the screen. The reason why you want to coat both sides of the mesh is you want to really encapsulate the mesh from both sides to get a very strong stencil. A strong stencil makes a good screen. A good screen makes a good shirt. So we want to make a very good screen. So we're going to take the scoop coater now. We're going to go ahead and coat. Once again, our emulsion has been open, so the bubbles go out of it. We're gonna put it at the bottom of the screen mesh, maybe a half inch up from the bottom. And we're gonna push the emulsion all the way onto the screen like that. Then I'm gonna move the scoop coater back, and I can see that emulsion kind of dam up against the mesh. So I'm gonna push it all the way on the screen mesh, and then I'm gonna move it back a little bit, 
Once it's back a little bit, make sure that there's still emulsion pressed up against the mesh. I'm going to put a pretty good amount of pressure on my hands using both hands and then move up to the top of the screen. As I do that, you're going to notice a zipping sound in the mesh. That's what you're looking for. If you don't put enough pressure, your emulsion is going to drip underneath your scoop coat and you're going to make a mess. If you put too much pressure, your screen won't move very consistently or very evenly. So just the right amount of pressure, which is a nice firm grip here. Moving all the way to the top of the mesh, about a half inch from the top of the mesh, we're going to let that emulsion drip down and back into the scoop coater and clean it off like so. So we notice here we have a little bit of drips on the both sides. We can take the scoop coater and kind of clean those up just like that. So if you have some drips either on your countertop or on your screen, you can take a nice, you know, just a, a rag with warm water and those will wipe right up. You want to do that immediately because if they dry, once again, it's no good. They're going to dry in there. So you can wipe the edge of your frame like that too. On the inside, it's the same deal. So take your scoop coater and this is a little bit trickier. You want to basically dip it into the screen and do that quickly so the emulsion is allowed to dam up. And then once you see it dammed up there, just simply move up. Once again, when you're about a half an inch from the top, let that emulsion kind of slide back into the scoop coater and then pull it off. So you want to hear that zipping sound either way. And then once that emulsion is back in the container or in the scoop coater, we can take a look at our screen and see what we got. What we're looking for is a nice, smooth, even coat of emulsion there. And once we see that, we're good to go. Now, if there's drips in it, we can actually clean it up by taking the scoop coater and going over the screen again. So we can take the scoop coater on one side, go over the screen like that to clean up any drips. Now you always want to do the front side of the screen first and the back side of the screen second. We're also going to let the screen dry in this down position with the flat side actually facing down and the ink or squeegee side facing up. The reason why we want to do coat in that method and we want to dry in this method is because we want the emulsion to settle on the outside of the mesh. What this does is this creates a nice printing well or a gasket and allows the ink to settle nicely onto the garment. We're going to let the screen dry in a down position. So I got two rolls of tape. You can also use blocks of wood or really anything to hold the frame up and allow that emulsion and mesh surface to not touch anything. So once it's facing like this, we want to have some air movement optimally couple different options, you know, with a, a fan blowing across the screen in standard temperature, you're probably going to dry this screen in, I don't know, maybe two, three hours. If it's very, very humid outside, you want to try to get in a dry environment. So, you know, inside or even put a little dehumidifier. We can also use our blow dryer here, which works great. Just take our blow dryer and then just turn it on, let it blow across the screen, you know, slowly like that. And that'll dry a screen real fast kind of blowing across the mesh surface like so. So whichever you want to do, you want warm, dry air. You don't want to be too hot, not over 100 degrees, and that will, should dry the emulsion in roughly, you know, 30 minutes if you're using a blow dryer to a couple hours if you're using a fan. Now let's take the remainder of our emulsion and dump that back into the emulsion container. I got a glove on for this one. I kind of wussed out. You can definitely use your hands, but glove's nice because you can just put your finger in there Let's get it all out. That way you save as much emulsion as possible. So once that's all in, as much as possible at least, we'll put that in our sink. We'll go ahead and cap the emulsion. We're going to clamp that shut. I'm going to store this in a cool environment, not too hot, not too cold. You don't want to let it freeze. So a fridge that is not freezing works great. Now we're going to simply rinse our coater out. So I got on the edge of the sink here. Once again, warm water works amazing for this. So nice warm water, just you know, kind of running down the scoop coater there. Works very, very good. You can actually take a, a rag and just assist the process. This emulsion is completely drain safe. You don't have to worry about that, but it will slightly stain. So if you get any stains on anything, make sure to clean them off right away. So like right up here, you have a stain right there. We're just going to clean that off with nice hot water. Cleans right off very, very simply. However, if it was left to stay there, it would stain permanently. So 
So that'll clean off in a couple minutes. Once it's clean, you can let it dry and set it aside for future use. We're gonna go ahead and take this 500 watt halogen light apart and go ahead and set it up in the exposure jig. So to do that, we're gonna get our exposure jig attachment to our press and our 500 watt halogen light and our screwdriver. And we're going to take out the glass. You don't really need the glass. So to, you don't really need the glass at all. So we're just gonna take the screw out and then just take this glass all the way off. Now let's install the light. So take the light out. Be careful not to touch the light. Not good for business if you're touching the light. So you can take the little carrier sheet that comes with the light and kind of use it as a protector or put gloves on. And then the light simply very simple to put in. Once again, this is all very easy. Just pops right in there. Make sure it's nice and snug. Then you can take the protector off like so. And now let's plug this guy into the press. Actually, doesn't plug it in the press, it just kind of snaps in. So, see how the two um, back end clamps of the press clamp this light into place, and then you want the light stable enough so you can kind of move it around if you want to. If you need to, you can snug up these guys just a little bit, but you want it essentially above the center of your platen, and this is going to be your exposure station. So, now we can take an extension cord and plug this guy in, make sure it works. And we have light. So this is going to be where you expose the screen. Film positive how, is how the screen is made. Underneath the exposure light, we take the unexposed screen, we put this film positive on it. So this screen printing is rad poster that we're going to do. Obviously you see the screen printing is rad is going to be on the poster. So that's what we mean by film positive. Whatever we see on this film is what goes on the poster or the t-shirt. So the goal of this is to block this light out, right? So that in order to do that, this film has to be super dark. And you can do, you can make film all different kinds of ways. You can actually draw on it with a Sharpie, which we'll show you in a second, or you can use an inkjet printer. So this is waterproof film, which is mean, means it's for an inkjet printer. The best type of inkjet printer to use is an Epson printer. An Epson printer is a photographic printer and it prints very dark. You want to use waterproof film, which is this, you know, kind of um, hazy type of film right now that you see here. It's the same type of film that comes in the kit. If you use just standard transparency paper, you're not gonna get a good image. The waterproof film has two sides to it. It has a sticky side. You can tell by licking your finger and the side your finger sticks to is the sticky side. It also has a smooth side. The side that you wanna print on with your inkjet printer is the sticky side. So you take this film, you stick it in your inkjet printer and you use best quality photo settings as your photo setting you know, in any inkjet printer, even the cheap ones, you can go into the advanced settings and you can choose the type of print that you want to do. You're going to want to act like you're printing a photo photograph. So use best quality photo settings because that actually lays more ink down on the transparency film. The type of paper setting that you want to use is you want to use premium glossy photo paper. Premium glossy photo paper is actually made very similarly to this film. This film has an inkjet receptive coating which is basically a microporous coating that actually takes ink. So I'm gonna take a Sharpie right now and I can draw into this and you can see how well this absorbs ink. Just really makes a very, very nice dark film like that. You can't, you know, if you see my hand below that, you can't really see below that. So it makes an awesome film. And right now, this is basically a film positive. We can create a shirt like that. Not that we'd want to create a shirt like that, but that's how it's done. So inkjet printer, Epson printer works best. Film face up with the sticky side face up. Through the printer, best quality photo settings on your inkjet printer in the computer, and then also premium glossy photo paper or photo paper as your paper setting. And that will do a very, very good job of printing a film. So here are some films that we burned, you know, or not, we haven't burned them yet, but we actually printed with Epson printers. This was done with an Epson 1100 and an Epson 1400 printer. Now, as you see here, you have some bigger sheets of film. Well, with the kit, especially the t-shirt kit, it only comes with small sheets of film. What you can actually do is you can take the film and you can tape it together. So with this background image, which will show printing a poster, we're gonna do a two color poster later. We actually printed the image out in three, you know, three different sections and then taped them together using scotch tape. 
to create one large film. So you can either buy one large film, like so, or you can tape them together. Now, if you need more film, they are available on our website. And if you want to see videos on how to print this film, go to Ryonet's YouTube channel. And there's a lot of cool videos on film output and how to use Epson printers to make these film positives. So let's go ahead and do the film that we're going to actually expose in the video, which is this one. And we're going to spice it up a bit by putting just a couple little plus signs and then DIY at the bottom. So I'm going to use a Sharpie because you can actually draw on these films fairly simply. So this is a very, very dark Sharpie and we want to make sure that we're pressing hard on the film positive. So we're just going to put a couple plus signs right there. There we are. So that's the film that we're going to do. And we use some of it on an inkjet printer and then some of it on actual just writing it with a Sharpie. So pretty, very, very cool, very simple to do. And you can really have a lot of fun making film positives. Any way you can get a really dark image on this film, you can create a good film positive. So even painting it or airbrushing it if you're an airbrushed artist works great. Once we have our film positive, we make sure it's very dark to block out that light from actually going through the film and making a good screen, let's place the film on our screen. Now to do this, you can get out your ruler or your tape measure, you can make sure your film is properly centered, or you can just eyeball it. You know, typically with one color images, I'm pretty much eyeballing it every time, making sure it's in the you know approximate center of the screen. So we got a good center there. You do reverse your film. So basically, if you're looking at the screen flat, you want to look at your film backwards. The way you want to see your film the right way is if, so I'm just using some scotch tape to tape this guy down right now, is if you look at your film like this, you want to see, because this is the way it's going to be printed, you want to see your film the way it would be printed here. You want to make sure it's as flat as possible to the mesh. So this is our dry screen. We actually have a nice flat film. And next we're going to move to exposure. So once it's all taped down there, we're going to put that screen directly under the center of the light and we're going to turn on our light. So right now this is all done once again in a light safe environment until it's exposed and after it's exposed we're going to rinse the screen out then we no longer have to be in light safe. So we got everything centered, we're ready to go, we have positive contact there. I'm going to stop watching the background, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and hit go. So once we've started we're going to start that. Now this is a dual cure emulsion. So this does give us a little bit of leeway room. We can go a little bit longer than nine minutes. I wouldn't really recommend going under nine minutes. Once again, the very, very important thing is to have very dark film. If you have dark film, even a little bit longer exposure time really doesn't matter. So after nine minutes, we'll come back here and we'll unplug the light and then we'll rinse the screen out. So now that the screen is exposed, we can take the film off of it. And we'll actually be able to see the exposed area in the screen mesh. It's very hard to see now, but you can actually see that exposed area. Um, the exposed area is the part that the film didn't block out. The unexposed area is the part the film blocked out. And that's why it's called a film positive. You're seeing the unexposed emulsion. The exposed emulsion actually changes color. Now right now, this still needs to be in a light safe environment. If we took this into the sun or turned all the lights on, all this unexposed emulsion would now start to expose. If we turned our exposure light on, the unexposed emulsion would start to expose. So we immediately, we either need to do one of two things. One, we need to protect the screen. We can do that by putting it into a, like a thick black trash bag or something like that. Or what we can also do is just simply go to rinse the screen out, which that's what we're going to do now. So if you do need to move it into a different room or something like that, put it in a thick black trash bag so that you're not exposing the unexposed area of the image. Okay, to rinse out our screen is actually very simple. We're going to do that in our light safe area once again. If you're doing it outside, do it in the dusk or at night or in the shade. You do not want bright light during this process. Simply turn on the cold water and we're going to get the screen wet on both sides. Now immediately, I get the screen wet, you can see the image in the screen. That means we did a good job during exposure. That's good. So get it wet on both sides. Now a couple things you want to take and, and notice here is A, is our emulsion slimy on the back? If our emulsion is slimy on the back, that means our screen's underexposed. Right now it's a little slimy, but mostly we don't see a lot of slime back here. That means we got a good exposure. If you do see a lot of slime back here, we want to increase the exposure time a little bit. 
What I'm letting the screen do now is basically what's called develop. So this is kind of like developing film. You're soaking the unexposed area with water to soften it up. The exposed part, however, is left hard in the mesh. The thing you want to be careful is you don't want to get the screen too wet. If you get the screen too wet with too much pressure or too much water, you're going to actually see the emulsion that is supposed to stay in the mesh rinse out and that's not good for business. That can mean a couple different things. A, your emulsion was not exposed long enough, so that means you're probably getting a lot of slime back here, or B, your emulsion wasn't dry enough. Remember, you really have to have this emulsion bone dry before you go to expose it. There's a really good video on Ryanet's YouTube channel on emulsion uh, problems exposing a screen. There's two videos actually, so if you have problems with this, you can go to that YouTube channel and, and type in you know, screen exposure problems or emulsion problems, and you can actually see really good videos on how to troubleshoot a little bit more in depth. So now that it's absorbed water for about a minute or so, we're gonna need to go to rinse this out. So you can see this emulsion immediately start to rinse out. Now you do want a little pressure in this process and you don't want too much you know, water. So if we can get a decent amount of pressure going on, that's gonna give us better. You can actually take your hand and you can slightly you know, help that emulsion work its way out of the screen. Remember, we do not wanna get this screen too wet. So if I sit here for 10 minutes and try to wash my screen out, that's probably gonna to start to wash the edge of my image out. If you can make this process work in a matter of a minute or two, that's optimal. If you see the edge of your emulsion start to kind of absorb water, so the edge of your emulsion, the edge of your image area absorb too much water, what that means is it's absorbing th that water. And that's not good because that means it will actually rinse out. So you can see right now, our screen's mostly rinsed out. We have a little bit at the bottom that needs to be rinsed out. And you can see our film actually rinsed out a lot better or the inkjet printer printed versus the Sharpie. The Sharpie did do a pretty darn good job though. So down here, we're just gonna assist this just a little bit and then we're almost done. And we're, we're good, that's about as good as it's gonna get. So now let's take a look at it and we are good to go. So now we can turn the lights on and dry the screen. So now we're gonna dry the screen by taking a clean paper towel and just kind of really quickly dabbing it dry. And then we can also take our blow dryer, which comes in handy, and just dry the screen. Now, if your screen is underexposed and you got a lot of that slime in the background, you still might get the image to wash out, but if you see emulsion or yellow stuff dripping down into your image area, A, that's a sign of underexposure. So next time you expose the screen, you wanna do it for a little bit longer. B, is what you're seeing there is you're actually seeing the image the emulsion, the underexposed emulsion, drip into your image area, which will block it when you're trying to print. So you want to take that rag or that you know clean paper towel and really dab that you know dirty water out. Otherwise, it'll get stuck in your mesh, and you'll have problems during the printing process. So you want to make sure that you're looking at your mesh, and then your mesh is nice and clean. A blow dryer really helps that helps with this. Also, one thing that really helps is you can actually take the screen put it back underneath the exposure light like so, and turn the exposure light back on. So the exposure light does a couple things. A, it hardens the screen up, and B, what you're doing is you're actually post hardening the screen and drying it at the same time. The sun will do the same thing, by the way. So with heat, you're drying the screen, and then the light is actually post hardening the screen, making it harder, which will last longer and print better. All right, after our screen is exposed, washed out, and dried, it's time to tape the frame. To do that, we have a couple different options. So we can use standard like a clear box tape, or we can use a screen tape. Now, I do recommend using a screen tape. You can get this available on our website, both in a blue and a white tape. Right now, we're showing a white tape. A screen tape's good because it doesn't stick too hard to the frame, and it doesn't clog up your mesh with adhesive. So this tape is very easy to rip off. And what you want to do is you want to tape the inside of the frame so the ink doesn't get around it. So by doing that, you do the mesh first, like you just saw me do, and then the edge of the frame. You want to make sure that the mesh and the edge of the frame is pressed firmly and that you seam the corner of the frame like so. So the importance of seaming that frame is that 
the tape isn't breaking if you're ever cleaning it or pulling a squeegee across it. So now we can show with a clear box tape, it's not nearly as easy to put down or to cut. But this is the clear box tape and it's gonna gump, gunk up our screens more. So I do like the white tape a lot better. And we wanna make sure we have a good coat of tape on the inside of the screen like that. Now I've been putting tape on for a long time, so I'm pretty fast at it. You're gonna take, it's a little bit of a knack getting used to really getting that frame seamed nicely, how I call it. So right now, you wanna start on one corner and work your way all the way around the frame. And then I do also recommend putting one strip of tape on the bottom where the ink's gonna dwell in. And you can actually go around, all the way around the frame like this, but one strip right there kind of acts as a little barrier if your ink starts to seep through it all. So now our, our screen is nice and exposed, post-hardened, dried, taped, and we're ready to do the fun part, which is start printing. Today we're doing a two-color poster. The background of the poster is going to be red, kind of boring, but this is the actual thing, well, really not boring. This is the actual background, so we're going to turn the background of the paper red, and then on top, we're doing this rad, screen printing is rad because it is, front print. So this is a, a custom font and everything done to, to really kind of bring the front of the print out. And we're doing that in black ink. So this is going to go down first in red. And we actually tape these films together and expose them. And then this is going to go on top of it. So we're going to lay the first layer down, go ahead and set our press up for that. To do that, we're going to bring our press down into the print position. So you got that in the print position, and then we're gonna put our screen into the print position as well. Now we need to do what's called set off contact. What off contact is, it's the distance between the screen, the ink, and the actual substrate, which in this case is a poster paper. So I'm screwing the press up like so, and I haven't really adjusted or set up the press. I wanna screw the screen in, down all the way like that, and now I'm gonna adjust the press. So if you can see, if I'm pressing down there, you can actually see how far off that screen mesh is from the platen. That's not good. You want that to be about an eighth of an inch off. Enough so that that screen releases the ink and then bounces back up, but not enough that I have to take my squeegee and press too hard to get the print to actually go onto the poster paper. So to adjust it, we're going to take our wrench here and we're going to loosen the back of the press up. And that allows us to adjust, raise, or lower what's called our off contact. So I'm going to lower this down a bit. Down. I'll loosen up a little bit more. And what we're looking for is about an eighth of an inch or so. Now, right now, the screen is on contact. So I'm pressed all the way down to my platen. A very easy way to help you out with this is to take your stack of poster paper, you know, stack it up and then put it underneath the screen. What this is going to do is this is going to evenly lay this screen about the right distance above the actual platen or substrate. So now we have our off contact in the back. We're going to make sure our screen's in the, all the way in the down position, like so. And now we're going to come back here and tighten these guys back up and that will automatically set our off contact at about an eighth of an inch, isn't that? and that's what we're looking for there. So tighten those back up in the back. Make sure the press is tightened too. So not only does the back have to be tightened, but you wanna make sure that the bolts right down there, or excuse me, the bolts right down here are tightened all the way up. And those are looking pretty snug. So now that our off contact is set, we're measuring it all the way around and we can actually get down and look underneath the screen to make sure it's even. We look like we're good here, so we're gonna go ahead and align our poster paper. So to do that, so we're gonna lift the screen up, we're gonna put just a little tiny bit of glue down. And we're gonna take either a card or some type of you know, hard substrate and kind of spread that out. And this is going to hold the poster paper in place while we're printing. And we don't want to put too much down. If we put too much down, it's going to be a little bit too sticky. 
So now we're lining up our poster paper, just putting it down onto the platen in the approximate spot where we think we need to be. And then we'll come down and put the screen down. So we can look through the screen, we can see if our poster paper is properly aligned. This needs to go a little bit over to the left. So I can either move the poster paper while I'm doing my initial aligning or I can move the screen. So right now I'm just going to move the screen to the left. And this actually has a little bit of what's called a bleed to it. So that means it's not going to cover the entire poster paper perfectly, which is fine. We're just going to align it as closely as possible. All right, once I'm good, I'm going to clamp her down like so. And then I'm going to lift it up slowly. And I'll come down here and I'm going to create little marks at the edge of my platen as to where to set this poster paper at every time. So that way when I'm putting a next piece down or for a second color, I know exactly where I need to go with it. So right there, right there, and that should give me enough. Our off contacts checked, our screens aligned. Let's go ahead and make a screen print. So I've loaded my screen and already flooded it. Now let's go ahead and make a screen print. So your squeegee angle wants to be about 80 degrees, like you see right here. In order to have a good print, what you want to do is you want to have enough pressure to release the ink down onto the substrate, in this case it's a poster paper, and then at the end of the print you want to lift your squeegee up to allow the mesh to release. That's what that off contacts for, is a little bit of space to allow the mesh to release the ink onto the substrate. So we got a 70 degree angle, we have enough, or excuse me, an 80 degree angle, now if you want to lay a little bit more ink down, you can actually lower your angle a little bit, but right now this 80 degree, 75, 80 degree angle works great. Now we're going to come all the way up and print all the way up to the top and we'll release it, allowing the ink to go down to the substrate. You see that release like so. Now after we've lifted it up, we're going to flood. You always want to leave your screen flooded. If you don't leave your screen flooded, what's going to happen is the ink's going to dry up in your mesh. So there's one print. Now we can just go into production printing. Those will dry in about five to 10 minutes in a warm environment. You can also put them underneath a fan or a blow dryer to kind of speed that process up a little bit. Now when you're printing posters, the faster you can print, the better. So I'm gonna print all my background colors first. Doing all my background colors first. I'm flooding after every print, remember? The reason why we're flooding after every print is because we do not want that ink to dry on the screen. So as you start to print, they're going to look better and better and better. You never want to go with your first poster right out of the gate because a lot of times that's your test print, right? So right now we're on our third or fourth poster here. We keep putting them down and then make sure we have enough tack down, enough ink in the screen. You really put a lot of pressure on this platen. I kind of stamp my squeegee as you see there reason why I'm doing that is because I'm allowing that ink to, you know, kind of slide off the squeegee there. And then we have our last piece here. And there we go. So now that we're done printing, we're not going to flood the screen again. We actually want to leave the screen open so that we can then clean it. So we've got a couple really good backgrounds there. We're going to let these dry. Now while we're letting these dry, let's go ahead and clean that ink out of the screen so that we can come down and we can lay our second color, which is black, on top of that while those first colors are drying. Now we're going to do the second color, so we're actually setting up the off contact right now. Now I notice that this frame, the off contact's a little low in the corner here. Well, instead of having to adjust the entire thing, what I did is I rolled up a couple quarters right there or some washers and put it at the edge of the frame just like so. And now I can come down and that helps hold up the edge of this frame so that our off contact is now even. Once our off contact is even, we're going to go ahead and put the poster paper down. We want to make sure that this ink is nice and dry. Put the poster paper down, then we'll register the second color. 
Now, by the way, when we're printing posters, we want to make sure that we're printing on non-glossy photo paper or poster paper, excuse me. Uh, if the glossy photo paper basically has a coating on it, that makes it very hard for the ink to stick and dry to it. So if we're printing on matte paper, it works the best. Also, uh, we got this paper from French Paper. It works great, nice and thick, um, but you can get poster paper, you know, really anywhere. So I'm going to actually stick this down, and we're going to register it and go for the second color now. Now, first, we want to make sure our platen is still tacky, and it is. Very nice and tacky there. So I'll register that very simple because you just simply line the poster up again. And then we want to make sure it's stuck all the way down. Obviously our ink's dry. So then we line the poster paper up, which this print, I mean, the way this poster is designed makes it super simple to line up a second color because it's the, the first color is a background, the second color is a nice overprint. Put our squeegee in. Before that, let's load this guy up with ink. Now we're printing with black ink on this one. Very similar. We're going to take our ink card. We're going to load that up with quite an amount, a uh, good amount of ink. So we want to make sure we have a good amount of ink back there. And go for the print. So the first thing we're going to do is flood. Get that screen loaded up with ink there nicely. Make sure off contact is good. And then about, well, let's say a 75 degree angle or so, a little bit lower angle, puts more ink through. We're gonna do a nice solid print. You can see the screen mesh release the ink there. So I'll just make sure it's dark enough on the first print. I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. Remember, the first thing that we're gonna do is tap the ink down the bottom, then we're gonna flood that screen. Make sure that ink's flooded with. Nice, there we go. Very cool print. And yes, screen printing is rad. If you need a little help, you can get like a little Sharpie. Not a Sharpie, like a, there it is. There's our poster. So now, while the ink is still wet in the screen, go ahead and print the rest of our posters off. Just line them up, make sure we're tacky. Push it down. Doing two passes on the black. Flood up between prints. There we go. It's kind of a one of our test prints there. But we'll print it anyway. That poster will cover nicely. You see at the end of the print, I'm kind of tapping off that ink and then I'm flooding the screen. The more ink that you can flood on the screen, the better. There we are. One more. And you can see this goes pretty fast once you get going. So you can really bang out a lot of posters. And you know, it's really cool. You can do posters for all sorts of different stuff. Bands, you know, um, events, things of that nature, for art, movies, all sorts of cool things. Now, because this is my last print, I'm not flooding the screen. I'm leaving the screen open, and that makes our cleaning job better. And there we go. We'll let the second color dry. And there's our screen printing is rad from our DIY gig poster kit. So now it's time to print a t-shirt with our DIY t-shirt kit. So what we're doing now is we're going to have our t-shirt palette on the press. I like making a center line. So this has a previous center line I drew previously on it before I cleaned it. I'm just going to take my ruler down again and kind of line it up again. The reason why I like doing that though is because it allows us to easily align the shirt and the screen to the shirt as well. So that center line really helps out a lot. I want to make sure that our palette's screwed in nicely. Now we take our screen and we line it onto the press. So we're going to take that screen. Now most most of the time I recommend putting some type of center line down the center of your shirt or in, the, in your screen and actually burning it in your screen, but this particular screen didn't have that. So we're just going to line it the best we can to the center. So it looks really good there. Then we're going to, then we're going to put in our screen. Now, we do need to set the off contact. So once, every time you kind of switch around your press, 
kind of really need to set your off contact up again. So we're going to grab our half inch wrench and raise this off contact up just a little bit. So we need our ink, of course, and a way to scoop the ink into those screens. So we're using these little you know, pa paper cards like that. And then we need this thing right here as a curing sheet. This protects the ink while we're curing it. So we also need to warm up our iron, which is what we're going to use to cure the ink. Other options to cure the ink, we can also use a heat gun. So we'll get that ready. We can show you using that. So now that we have all that prepared, let's go ahead and put our glue onto the palette. So come down here. Let's put our glue onto the palette. So this is the water-based glue. And we need about that much. And we take one of our cards here and we spread out the glue evenly. Now this is a water-based glue. So you can actually clean it up with warm water and reactivate it with warm water. So that's pretty cool. What really helps to activate this glue is some heat. So I can take a blow dryer or my heat gun and kind of go over this glue like so. And that really helps activate it up. So I'll take my heat gun like that. Let's go over that. It doesn't really take a lot to activate it. All right, now let's measure the shirt neck placement. So typically, I want about three inches down or about three fingers down from the top of my t-shirt to the top of my print. Now, this is a little bit bigger print. So the top of my t-shirt is actually going to hang off the platen about so. So I can't actually come in here and mark the platen. Typically, I take a Sharpie and mark the platen. But right now, we simply get to take the t-shirt and load it on. Now, most t-shirts have what's called a center line to them, especially if they're new. So this one's been wrinkled up a little bit, so you can't really tell, but you can vaguely still tell there's a center line in the center of that t-shirt. So we're coming here, we're really making sure that we get that shirt on center. I do that by loading the shirt all the way on and then lifting it back by the corner sleeves. And remember, we're going to pull this one off about an inch or so so that the placement matches correctly. So once that's pulled off, we're going to flatten it down. We want to make sure we have enough adhesive to hold it down. Let's go ahead and put the screen down and ink it up and then print. So we want to put enough ink in the screen in order so the ink is not drying during the printing process. So we load a pretty good amount of this ink. Now we're going to print with black ink here. There we go. Pretty good amount. We'll just leave that. Typically, if we're going to do a lot of printing, we want to cap the container. But right now, we're only going to print one shirt or so, so we're going to leave that open. I want to take this squeegee and flood the screen, get that ink flowing through the mesh, not all the way printing it, but just flooding it on top of it. Then we're going to take our squeegee at about a 70 degree angle or so, and we're going to pull up and do our print. So good amount of pressure down. You want to make sure when you're printing, you're actually squeegeeing the ink through the screen. A lot of people just try to smash the ink through the screen like that. Well, you're not really printing. you got to have a little bit higher angle. So we're going to squeegee the ink through the screen. And you, want, you shouldn't be able to basically move your finger on the edge of your frame like that without that ink coming off. So then we pull the ink up and then we'll do that one more time just at the beginning of the print just to ensure that we're all good. You shouldn't see ink stuck in your mesh. So see how I lift that screen up and there's no ink in my mesh? That means all my ink is released onto the screen. So now we're going to flood the screen again. Remember, always flood your screen between prints. That's very important to do. Otherwise, your screen will dry out. And there's our first shirt printed off the DIY screen print press. So now it's time to cure it. So we're going to lay this back down over the platen like so. And we'll show you the different curing options we have. One is the iron. So the iron basically irons the ink and cures it as it irons it. So we take our curing sheet to protect the ink. And this ink needs to essentially get to about 320 degrees in order to cure all the way. So what my iron's doing is it's heating the ink up underneath the print area right there. You want to make sure the iron is set to the hottest setting possible. And it's had a chance to really warm up. We really want to bake in this ink. And you should actually see it steam and evaporate out underneath. So right now this iron is a little not, not very hot. So let's take the iron off and then we'll show the top part curing with our heat gun. Because I like curing the heat gun, I think it works pretty good. Well, you can see that steam evaporate out. Here's the heat gun. And the heat gun, you actually go over each section of the ink at a time. Once again, the, ink, the heat gun does have to heat up a little bit. 
so you can see the heat gun's heated up. If the ink does not cure all the way, it will wash out. So curing the, the shirt is very, very important. So we'll leave that down part um, you know, wet a little bit so we can show the iron. So we're going through each part of that. You want to make sure not to get too close to the shirt because you could burn it. And you're going to see that kind of smoke off and that's really just the water evaporating out of the ink. That's a good sign by the way. Okay, so that's the top. You really got to hit that ink for a long time. I typically recommend at least two minutes while with the ink on top of it. So you measure yourself about two minutes out of doing this stuff and you should be nice and cured. After that two minute time frame, we got our iron as hot as we can get it. Or we'll release that up. You can see it steam off like that. You can tell. Now, a couple ways to test this is you can take you know, a t-shirt and kind of rub on that a little bit. And if no ink's rubbing off, that's a good way to, to basically test it. Make sure that it's all the way in there. But now we have a nice cured shirt. That ink will last a long time in there. Should last the life of the shirt. You know, the shirt should start to tear away before that ink, if as long as it's cured really properly. So once we're done printing, we're going to scoop all the ink that we can back into the container so we save it and then we'll go ahead and reclaim the screen so we can use it for a different design. Once all of the ink is out of our screen, we're gonna de-tape it. So we're basically just gonna tape all the tape out of the screen very carefully. And as you can see, that takes most of the ink out of the screen with it, as long as we did a good job cleaning the screen. So we'll throw that away. Now we'll take just a slightly wet rag and clean the rest of the ink up off the frame and the screen. And let's go ahead and reclaim it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the image out of the screen so we can use this screen for another print. Okay, to clean the screen, basically remove the emulsion, we're going to take our DOI screen print emulsion stripper and we're going to fill that up with water. sure not to overfill it and lose a bunch of it. Then we're going to take our other scrub brush. This is this scrub brush right here. This is not the degreaser one. You want to basically store these in separate bags. So then what I do is I take like a, like a nice Ziploc bag and write degreaser and write emulsion remover on the outside and then store this brush in that bag so you know which is which. So now we're going to take our emulsion remover and we'll spray it down to make sure the screen is nice and soaked on both sides with that emulsion remover spray. So what this emulsion remover essentially does is it removes the emulsion and any ink stains out of the shirt, but it takes a little agitation. So we're gonna let that soak on the outside and on the inside. Now a couple things to can take into consideration is you never, ever, ever, ever wanna let this emulsion remover dry on the frame. If you let it dry on the screen, like you, if I was to go and take a lunch break right now and just let this sit here, I'm never going to reclaim this screen. It's going to be too hard for me to reclaim this screen. The other thing that you want to take into consideration when you're reclaiming screens is that if your screen wasn't properly exposed to begin with, you're going to have a harder time reclaiming it. So essentially, if your screen was underexposed, it won't reclaim as easy, not nearly as easy as all. But you can already see this emulsion starting to degrade as that emulsion remover starts to work its way into it. Now the important part here, the most important part I think is pressure. So if you have a pressure washer, you know, like one of those little electric ones or even a gas one, you know, don't worry about doing this in the sink. Take this outside and just blast away with it at the, with the pressure washer. It works so much better. Um, and if you have a really stuck screen and you don't have access to a pressure washer, what you can do is you can actually go down to the car wash, use one of their pressure washers, and actually, you know, really bust out some tough emulsion with that pressure washer at the car wash. So now we take our scrub brush and we're going to scrub this emulsion remover into the screen and really agitate it up on both sides. First you want to make sure you have plenty of it on there. And you want to see, you can actually see it take out the emulsion. 
you need to add a little bit more, you can. So first you scrub the front of it. Now the areas of the screen where there's more emulsion, so especially if you didn't get a thick coat, that might be a little bit harder to reclaim. There we go. Now let's go ahead and rinse the screen off. Once again, because I did a really good job getting all that emulsion out, I don't need a lot of pressure, but pressure would do me good even right here. If I have pressure, I don't have to scrub nearly as hard. So spray the outside of the screen and the inside of the screen. Now basically what we could do now, this is done, you go ahead and degrease the screen again and start over. So you can, right now if you're gonna put another image on it just while it's in the wet water, go ahead and degrease it and you can start over again. Now you see this little black haze right here? This is called a haze. And what you can get is some haze remover. We have a really good haze remover called the green stuff. It's eco-friendly. And the haze remover actually takes the haze out and degreases the screen at the same time. So check out the green stuff because it works very, very good for keeping your screen clean and degreasing it. So it does kind of two in one step. That's basically the end of the process now. We've gone through the entire process. We are ending up with a blank screen again that we can start anew. And that's one really cool thing about screen printing is if you mess up, you can reclaim your screen and go again. And you know, seeing things in a video is very simple because we kind of do step by step. But as you start to experience and start to get hands on, you're gonna notice some things might work better than other things. So definitely take notes, take mental note, and just keep having fun, keep experimenting, and you're gonna have more and more success, get more and more cool prints on those shirts. Well, we hope you learned a lot and have a fun time screen printing. Feel free to connect with us on Facebook, on Instagram, and post pictures of what you do. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, screen printing is rad.